Wojak is paying $30,000 a year to study sociology because he was told to follow his passion by his teachers and society. Deep down, he knows he's making a terrible financial decision, and he also realizes that he's basically paying $100,000 to have woke professors tell him the same stuff that he constantly hears on TV, the news, from politicians, and his annoying purple-haired aunt who likes to post on Facebook all the time. But he's too afraid to make a change because he's worried he'll make the wrong decision and end up in a career he hates. Then, one day, Elon takes pity on Wojak and tells him to go where the opportunity is. That the secret to a happy career is to stop being self-centered and to start solving other people's problems instead. That the secret to receiving value is to first give value. Because you can have whatever you want as long as you give other people what they want. Wojak finally switches majors to a useful degree that will actually give value to the world and make good money, and his purple-haired aunt has an absolute meltdown. Wojak ends up landing a great job that actually gives value to society, makes a ton of money, and lives a great lifestyle. He looks back on his friends who got useless degrees and all of them are stuck in dead-end jobs working at Starbucks or in a cubicle. So I've said many times on this channel that the only reason you should go to college is if it's going to help you achieve your goals in life. And instead of focusing on a college major, what you should do is look at the career that you wanna go into and then figure out which major is going to help you get into that career. And in some cases, you won't have to go to college. But there are some degrees that almost always lead to high paying jobs. And the first one on the list, number 10, is going to be Management Information Systems or MIS. So an MIS degree is basically a combination of technology and business. And it teaches you to solve business problems using technology, specifically with an emphasis on data. And I've talked about data on this channel before. It's more valuable than oil or gold. And MIS is kind of like a compass for a ship. Just as a ship's compass would guide a ship through turbulent waters, MIS guides a company through the complex world of data and technology. Now, the median base salary here is gonna be for entry-level jobs only. So it might seem a little bit low, but keep in mind this is for an entry-level job, and that is going to be $58,000 a year. Some popular entry-level jobs will be network administrator, help desk analyst, and business analyst. Now, in the book, The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco, which by the way, Way is one of the best personal finance books of all time. He basically says there are three different main financial paths, the sidewalk, the slow lane, and the fast lane. So the sidewalk is for people who don't make very much money. They don't really understand how money works or personal finance principles. They spend more than they earn. They make bad decisions. They get deep in debt. And they either have no job at all or they have a low income job. So they never really make it to their destination by using the sidewalk. Now, the slow lane is for people who have a decent job and they do eventually make it to their destination, aka retirement, right? So they probably invest their money. They have a 401k. They have a Roth IRA. And after 40 or 50 years, they get to retire when they're probably too old to actually enjoy it. And the fast lane is for people who start a business, make a few million dollars within 10 years, and they're able to retire early. Now, one thing about starting a business is it's difficult, stressful, and most businesses fail. So this can be a great option for the right type of person, but I believe that there is a fourth option that MJ doesn't mention, and that is the option of taking a detour. So what exactly is a detour? Well, it's where you achieve the lifestyle you want without having to retire first. And the way you do this is by having either a small business or a job that you enjoy that allows you to live the lifestyle that you want to live. For instance, I know lots of people out there that have remote jobs and they make between 50 and $100,000 a year, and they're able to live like an absolute king abroad. There are countries out there where you can live very well on $1,000 a month. So if you're making like $5,000 a month, you live like a king. And this is exactly the type of job that you can get with an MIS degree. Why? Because MIS leads you into career paths where you're going to be learning in demand skills. And when you have a high income skill that's in demand, you can use that as leverage to get the kind of lifestyle that you want. So some of the pros of an MIS degree are going to be that it's extremely versatile. There's also really high demand, great salary. There'll be continuous learning if you're the type of person who likes to learn new things every day. And you'll be very familiar with technology, which is important in the modern day for doing tasks such as gently tapping the like button on every Shane Hummus video. Some of the cons here are technology 
is rapidly changing. So you might learn some kind of framework or language that goes out of style five years from now. It is relatively limited when it comes to creativity. There is a heavy reliance on technology and you're gonna have a lot of pressure to deliver results. Number nine on the list is going to be a nursing degree. And this degree prepares you to provide medical care, support and education to patients in various healthcare settings. And nursing can be likened to the foundation of a house. And nurses are basically like the foot soldiers of the healthcare industry. They're basically in the trenches taking care of patients on a day-to-day -day basis. Now the median base pay at the entry level is going to be about $58,000 a year. And some popular entry level jobs are going to be registered nurse, licensed vocational nurse, and case manager. So a few years ago, I was living in Bellingham, Washington, and one of my friends was a photographer and their partner was a travel nurse. And they told me that they were making nearly $500,000 a year. So there is opportunities to make a ton of money as a nurse. And you don't have to be a travel nurse to make good money. There are many normal nurses out there that don't have to travel all over the country that make over six figures. And there's also opportunities for continuing education. For instance, you could become a nurse practitioner. You could even become a nurse anesthetist and they make almost as much as a doctor. So some of the pros here, there is a wide range of career options, especially in healthcare that's relatively rare. There's extremely high demand for nurses. There's constantly a shortage. You can make a very nice salary. There's lots of opportunities for ongoing learning and development. And you have the ability to make a positive impact on patients' lives. Some of the cons here are that it is physically and emotionally demanding. There can be long and irregular work hours. For me personally, that was a pro. I actually worked in healthcare myself and I enjoyed working 12 hour shifts because that meant I only had to work three or four days a week instead of five. There is potential for exposure to illnesses and diseases. It can be a high pressure work environment. There is potential for burnout due to workload and stress. And you have to deal with healthcare guidelines changing every five seconds when the scientists that are definitely not biased and definitely not getting paid by Big Pharma decide that the guidelines should change. Number eight on the list is going to be statistics. And a statistics degree is going to teach you how to collect, analyze, and interpret data to make sense of patterns and trends. And the way I like to look at statistics is it's almost like a key that unlocks the secrets of data, right? Just like a locksmith with the right key can unlock a door, a skilled statistician can use their knowledge and tools to extract valuable insights from a data set. So the median base pay here is 60,000 at the entry level and a popular entry level job is going to be data analyst. So some of the pros here are you will learn versatile skills. Just about every industry out there uses data. There is high demand for statisticians and it gives you the ability to make data driven decisions. Some of the cons here are it does have the potential for isolating work. It can be difficult to communicate complex statistical analysis to people who don't understand statistics. Some of the jobs can be pretty high pressure. And of course there's math. Yeah, that's a con. Speaking of math, number seven is going to be civil engineering. And a civil engineering degree is going to teach you how to design, build and maintain structures such as buildings, bridges and roads that are safe, functional and sustainable. And civil engineering can almost be seen as the backbone of a city in the same way that a backbone is going to support the human body. A civil engineer is going to support the infrastructure of a city. Now the median base pay here at the entry level is 61,000 and some popular entry level jobs are going to be civil engineering engineer, structural engineer, and field engineer. Some of the pros here are the ability to design infrastructure that improves people's quality of life. There is high demand for civil engineers. The salary is great. And you have a collaborative work environment with other professionals. Some of the cons here are engineering degrees are incredibly challenging. You do have a risk of liability for potential design flaws. A lot of the time you're gonna be dealing with timelines and budget constraints. And sometimes you'll actually be working on construction sites. So that can be somewhat physically demanding. And one of the biggest cons is you're going to have to be very up to date on the newest regulations, right? Laws change all the time and you have to stay up to date on that. And then the last con is math again. Yeah. Number six on the list is going to be information technology. And an information technology degree is going to teach you how to use and manage computer systems and networks to store, process, and transmit data and information in a secure and efficient manner. So the median base pay here at the entry level is about 64,000. Some popular entry level jobs are going to be help desk, 
programmer analyst, and technical support. So some of the pros here are there is a wide range of career opportunities in IT, not only within IT itself, but IT a lot of the time is gonna be kind of your way of getting your foot in the door in the technology industry. So a lot of people start off in IT and then they move on to other things like logistics, or maybe they move into more of a data analyst role, or maybe they move into software development or tech sales, et cetera, et cetera. There's also extremely high demand for IT professionals. The salary is great. There's lots of opportunities for ongoing learning and development. You get to work with cutting edge technology. So if you're the type of person who really likes tech, you basically like to have the newest phone, the newest computer, the newest NVIDIA graphics card or whatever, this might be a good career for you. And another pro is there's not as much math. Some of the cons are that it is a rapidly changing technological environment. Technology is evolving and changing incredibly quickly. You know, five to 10 years ago, just about every company is probably going to be using AI, for instance, to make their entire process just much more seamless. So that's something that as an IT person, you're probably gonna have to get used to. It can be somewhat isolating. That could be a pro or a con, depending on what you like. One big con is you don't actually have to get a college degree in order to get into IT. That doesn't mean that getting a college degree is a scam, but you don't have to get it. So for instance, a few months ago, I interviewed James on the channel who was able to get into an IT job in just a few weeks without a college degree or previous experience, and he didn't even have access to a computer. He literally did it with just his iPad. And I interviewed him about how he was able to do that, and you can definitely check it out. Number five on the list is going to be industrial engineering. And this is one of my personal favorite engineering degrees. And an industrial engineering degree is going to teach you how to optimize complex systems, processes, and organizations by applying principles of mathematics, engineering, and social sciences to improve efficiency, productivity, and safety. And an industrial engineer can be likened to the conductor of an orchestra. Just as a conductor is going to coordinate and optimize the performance of many different professional musicians, industrial engineers are going to coordinate and optimize the performance within a business. And typically it is going to be more of a manufacturing or production type environment. So the median base pay here is gonna be about $64,000 a year at the entry level. And some career paths you might go into are going to be industrial engineer, quality engineer, and production planner. So some of the pros here are you get really good at improving processes. There is a high demand for industrial engineers, a very competitive salary as well. There's lots of opportunity for ongoing learning and development, and it is a collaborative work environment with other engineers as well as different types of professionals. Some of the cons are going to be challenging coursework because it is an engineering degree. It can be high stress, especially when you have to meet project deadlines, and you're gonna have to balance cost saving measures with employee safety and well-being. And there is a risk of liability with potential design flaws. And you might face resistance from employees when you're implementing new processes. Now, if you enjoy videos like this that are designed to teach you how to go where the opportunity is and how to actually get results when it comes to your career, education, and money, then go ahead. If you haven't liked the video, definitely do that. But even more importantly, go ahead and share this video with other people who would find it useful. Number four on the list is going to be chemical engineering. And this is one of the highest paying types of engineering. And chemical engineers are almost like the modern day a alchemist, right? Just like an alchemist tried to transform random substances into valuable metals like gold, chemical engineers use their knowledge of chemistry, mathematics, and engineering to transform raw materials into valuable products. The median base salary here is $65,000 a year at the entry level, and some career paths you might go down are going to be chemical engineer, process engineer, and project engineer. Some of the pros here are very high demand, very competitive salary, lots of opportunity for learning and development, and the ability to make a positive impact on society through innovation. Some of the cons here are it's incredibly challenging. It's actually one of the hardest types of engineering. You have to adhere to strict safety regulations. There is potential for exposure to hazardous chemicals. You may have to move somewhere in order to get the best jobs, and it may require long hours of work in order to meet project deadlines. Number three on the list is going to be mechanical engineering. And this is one of my favorite engineering degrees as well because of how flexible it is. Mechanical engineers are basically like master builders who design and develop complex machines. 
and it's definitely one of the more practical types of engineering. So the median base pay here is going to be 68,000. Some of the most common jobs you might go into would be mechanical engineer, design engineer, and project engineer. And some of the pros of this one are going to be the ability to develop a wide range of mechanical systems and products. There's high demand. It's extremely competitive when it comes to the salary. It's one of the most flexible types of engineering degrees as well. Some of the cons here, the coursework is very difficult, just like the other engineering degrees. It can be somewhat difficult to get your first job at the entry level. Once you've got some experience, it's really easy, but that first job can be a little bit more difficult. And you're going to need to keep up with rapidly evolving technology and regulations in some cases as well. Number two on the list is going to be electrical engineering. And this is one of the ones that made it into S tier in my engineering degree tier list. And it basically teaches you how to design, maintain, and develop electrical systems. And as an electrical engineer, you're almost like a wizard that harnesses the power of electricity. I mean, think about it. If you took electricity, like lights, for instance, you went a thousand years in the past and you showed them that, they would literally think that it's magic. Now, the median base salary here is 68,000 at the entry level. And some of the most common jobs you might get into are electrical engineer, systems engineer, and software developer. Some of the pros here are going to be the ability to design and develop a wide range of electrical systems and products. There is a high demand for electrical engineers. The salary is great. There's lots of opportunity for ongoing learning and development. In fact, lots of electrical engineers end up working as software developers, for instance. And you have the ability to work with cutting edge technology. And that would give you an advantage even if you decided to work in the software development industry because of the fact that you have that background in electrical engineering as well. Some of the cons here are, yes, it's very challenging. In fact, it is one of the more difficult types of engineering degrees. And honestly, there's not that many other cons because of how flexible it is. But number one on the list is not gonna be a surprise to anyone, and that is going to be computer science. This is gonna be all about learning how to code and learning how computers work. And computer science is almost like learning the language of robots so that you can command them to do whatever you want. Median base salary here is going to be $70,000, and some common entry-level jobs are gonna be software engineer, systems engineer, and web developer. And when it comes to the pros, I mean, it just has so many pros. A wide range of different career opportunities. Also extremely flexible. There's high demand, incredibly good salary, ridiculously good benefits in the technology industry, lots of opportunity for ongoing learning and development, and the ability to work with cutting edge technology. And honestly, it just goes on and on. Some of the cons here are technology is rapidly changing. So you might, you know, spend a bunch of time learning a language or a framework. And then three to five years later, you never use it again. Another con is the potential for isolating work and the heavy reliance on technology can sometimes lead to depression. Another thing people complain about, which is kind of a quality problem, is a lot of the time they only work like one to two hours per day. And then the rest of the day, they just do nothing like play ping pong or something like that. So depending on your personality, that might actually be really boring for you. Now, one of the biggest decisions people make on my channel is picking the right college degree for them. And that's why I created the ultimate college degree guide to help you pick the perfect degree for you. Click right here to check it out.